Today we'll do another page speed review, this time looking at the docker.com website. We can see that the page is not rendering very quickly, we've got loudest content from paint score over 9 seconds, and we can also see that for real users, this page also isn't meeting the Core Web Vitals assessment. To get started, we click on the Large Contentful Paint metric title to get more information about what's causing the Large Contentful Paint. And we can see that in this case, it's this background image that covers most of the page. It's not a very large file, but it only starts downloading um, very late in the page load process. And that's also reflected in the LCP subparts breakdown, where load delay contributes the most to the overall metric score. If we scroll down a bit, we can look at the LCP image discovery process, and we can see that the SVG is referenced directly from within the HTML, so there is no chain of requests that has to download one after the other, leading up to the SVG to be downloaded. So what is holding back the largest content for pain on this website? We can see that there are a lot of render blocking requests, a lot of different style sheets are being loaded, but most of them are finishing pretty quickly, so they don't have a massive impact on page speed. However, if I scroll down a bit more, I can see that there are also some other style sheets that are a lot larger than the ones we talked about before, and accordingly take a lot longer to download. To understand why these files are so big, I can expand the request and then select the Size Analysis tab. This will show me all the different CSS rules that are in the style sheet and how much space they are taking up. What we can see in this style sheet though is, there, is that there are just a couple of really large uh, CSS rules before we get to the smaller ones. So if I expand some of these font phase rules, we can see that they have um, a font reference. So this is kind of normal. We're referencing, you know, a true type font, different font formats. But if I click on show all, we can see the last font is this SVG font and it's all embedded fully in the CSS file. So this makes the CSS font render blocking. And now we suddenly have 17 different render blocking fonts that are embedded in the CSS file. So it's not really about specific CSS rules, but rather fonts that are embedded in the CSS. And generally, I would consider that an anti-pattern, just load your fonts separately. Um, and also, you probably don't want to load nine fonts on this page. So if you really are going to embed your fonts in the CSS, just pick two or three that are the most important on your website. So this is one important finding. And we can see right now, this request is taking 5.47 seconds to finish. And if we can just like make it a lot smaller, this will speed up the page load by a lot. However, if I scroll down a bit and I look at the rendering film strip, we can see that there is this other message, which is that content was hidden using CSS until the 7.97 seconds. So what this means is if I hover over this, that the page was applying opacity zero styles to the page contents. So usually this is what happens when you use AB testing tools. So they are loading all the A-B tests and until that point, they just want to don't show you any content uh, to avoid a flicker when the A-B tests are being applied to the page. So that's kind of why the body is hidden at that point. And if we look back at how the page is rendering, we can see, I think, a few visual website optimizer requests like this one here. One nice thing we can see here is that they use a pre-connect hint. So the connection actually happens before the actual request is made on the page. And because of this A-B testing tool, no content is going to appear until uh, this request has finished. So we can find out what exact like, CSS code is causing that problem. So I'm going to inspect to open the dev tools. I'm going to enable the mobile simulation. I'm just going to accept cookies. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of throttling to throw down the network, let's say for fast 4G. And now I am going to switch to the sources tab and I'm going to reload the page. And while the page is loading, my plan was to kind of pause. Um, let me just try that again. It takes a couple of times. Now I've paused, hopefully in the right place. So sometimes it's easy to pause too early, which I've, is what I've done just now. You see, like, we only have the head of the page, not the body. So I'm just going to try it one more time. OK, so this time I've been more successful. And the HTML has been passed to the point where the body element exists. And if I look at this, maybe I'll just search for the opacity rule. You can see we have a body opacity, zero important rule. So that means even though the content is available, um, it is currently invisible. But like if I just disable this rule in Chrome DevTools, you can see that the page content does appear. And if I click on style in here, it's going to show me where exactly that style is and like why the page content is hidden. And we can also see viz opt path hides kind of tells me that it's visual website optimizer hiding this content. So now that we understand why this page content is being hidden, uh, we can try out some optimizations. 
Um, so I could edit the HTML to take out that rule. The other option is VSS automatic experiment, force hidden content to be displayed. I add that to the page and it will just override all the rules that the page has about hiding content on the page. The other thing I want to do is inline some of the screen.css file without the fonts embedded in it. So this is a little bit tricky. So I can go to manually edit HTML. I can find screen.css. Um, and the easy part is taking this out. Uh, but then I actually have to put in a style tag. And I'm basically just like inlining the styles from the screen.css file directly into the HTML. So I've already done that earlier. I will show you what that looks like in the final result. This one I mentioned, and then we have this extra style rule that's kind of embedded. This experiment is not like 100% uh, fair just because the style before it was in a separate file, now it is embedded. Uh, but the main performance difference is going to be because the fonts don't have to be loaded anymore. So it should be pretty accurate. So what we can see is we have reduced, in this example, the LCP score from 10 seconds to 7.7 .7 seconds. And most of that is driven by the massive reduction in the first contentful paint score. And if we look at what that feels like to the user, we can play this replay and we can see that content is going to appear a lot sooner now uh, that we don't have to load all those fonts anymore. So now that these two big issues have been resolved, what else can we do to make this website faster? And one other thing we can see in the screen CSS file, we can actually do further reductions. So if I scroll down beyond the fonts, we can see, first of all, this is like one of the larger images we have. So we have this 39 kilobyte image embedded in the CSS. And after that, we also have a lot of smaller images. So this is just a little SVG. This is um, another SVG. I think this is another SVG. So there are a lot of icons in here that are embedded that if they are loaded separately, that would also reduce the download size of the CSS code. You can also look at the HTML code size to see if there's any room for reduction in here. Uh, one thing we can see is that they embed New Relic. So the New Relic embed is pretty large. So that can sometimes slow down your website. Another thing is that there's a lot of inline styles in here as well. And if I look at some of these, they're individually, they're not very big. But if I go into the body, they're actually embedded several times. So pretty similar styles embedded, possibly 10 times. And um, that's going to compress really well because of gzip or broadly or whatever this website is using. But it still means that it's going to take longer for the browser to pass the HTML. So we talked about the render blocking CSS. After that, there's actually quite a bit of render blocking JavaScript code as well. So for example, we're loading jQuery, we're loading jQuery migrate and a few other files. So one thing we can look at is, do these actually have to be render blocking or can they load after the page is rendered? So you display the content first and then you use JavaScript to make it interactive after it has rendered. You can see that these scripts at the top, they're loading a bit faster because they can reuse the docker.com connection, but then there are another four scripts down here that need a new server connection. So that's just going to slow things down a little bit and they take a little bit longer than the scripts further up. We can also see that there are a bunch of parser blocking scripts on this page. Um, but they don't actually block rendering. So they are all placed all the way down uh, in the body so they can load after all the rest of the page content has been displayed. And debugger indicates that by the color of the parser blocking badge. So in this case, the parser blocking badge is gray, which in our case just means it is after the H1 element in the HTML. Whereas if we found that the parser blocking script was before the H1 element, we would say, okay, this is probably important for displaying content and you want to optimize it in which case it would be orange like the other uh, fully render blocking scripts. So making some of these fonts not render blocking is another thing that we can try out. There's an automatic recommendations in debug bear, reduce render blocking resources. We click on this and just gonna like add defer to all of these scripts. Again, the difference won't be very visible if we don't also fix the uh, CSS opacity uh, content hiding. So when I ran the other experiment, which is here, I applied all the three changes that we talked about so far together. So we're making sure the content shows, we are not loading the fonts anymore, and we, were we are deferring all of the external scripts. Uh, and you can see we have like a massive reduction now um, in the first Contentful Paint and largest Contentful Paint scores. And if we look at the waterfall side by side, we can see that a lot of these fonts that were previously render blocking like this one, um, now no longer block rendering. And some of them can load quite a bit later because they're lower priority. 
So we've looked at three optimizations on this website so far. The last one I would look at is making sure that the LCP image itself is loading a bit sooner. So now we can see that it does finally load after the browser realizes it's in the viewport. The reason it only starts loading then is because this is a background image with CSS. So a background image relies on a, another element being painted on the screen and then rather knows actually to like display this um, element I have to also load this background image, which is why it can only start loading once the element is in the viewport. So that's kind of why it's loading so late. And at that same time, we have some other resources being loaded. And I think that's also just delaying this download of this file uh, a little bit because the file itself is pretty small, but then there are these two other requests at least kind of going on at the same time, um, which are also taking up bandwidth at that point. So to speed up the LCP image, um, generally we can preload that image in the debug bear recommendations, there is this one item called ensure LCP image is loaded with high priority. So if I click on run an experiment there, what it's just going to do, it's going to add a preload tag for the LCP image and also at the same time make sure that this image is loaded with a high priority. And if you look at the result of doing that, we can now see that the preloaded image is appearing pretty much immediately once the page starts rendering rather than only starting to load at that point. So in review, we've made four changes to the website. First of all, we disabled the opacity zero styles that were hiding the content. Second, we removed the embedded fonts from the CSS code to make that file load faster. Then we made sure to defer inline scripts so they don't block rendering. And finally, we preloaded the LCP image so it's ready to render when the browser needs it.